today on Stitches TV, we are going to make some truly unique arty collars. Now everywhere on the high street and everywhere, I'm seeing all these detachable collars and they're being worn almost like, mine's made of paper. Um, <laughs> they're being worn almost like a form of jewelry or something. Now I want to show you how to make a completely unique collar that I'm calling an arty collar. First of all, you need to make a template. Now what I did was, I cut two halves of a rough shape that I thought would fit around my neck. And then you have to try that on and keep adjusting it until it sits properly around your neck. So the way in which to create a completely unique collar is with this secret. Listen to this. There is a company online called Crafty Computer Paper. Now, they sell fabric that you can put through your inkjet printer and print onto. I'll leave you with that thought because your brain's just going to go crazy with all the possibilities. To make life easy for you, I've created a PDF and it, underneath this film there'll be a link to it and you can download, I've got a few kind of arty collars that you can print off yourself onto your own fabric. So what we need today is, we need a template of our collar, we need some backing fabric for our collar, and some ties, but I'm going to use my suede for the ties, and we need our really important digital print fabric with the template of the collar in it. So the first thing that you need to do is, you need to cut out your arty collar that you've printed already onto the fabric before taking the paper off. So I'm going to cut that out now but I need to leave a little seam allowance. I'm going to leave about half a centimetre seam allowance going all the way round my printed collar. So that's what we've got so far, so I've cut both of them out. Now I need to put them onto my backing fabric, the fabric that's going to be, they're, they're going to be backed with, right sides together. I've still got the paper on the back, I haven't taken it off yet. So I've got that right sides together and then all I have to do is just draw around it and cut it out. So I've cut the backing fabric, I cut two of them and I put them right sides together. Now because it's suede and it's not going to fray, I'm going to cut my ties out of this. Now I'm using fake suede for my backing fabric, but you can use any fabric to back it. But if it does fray, then for your ties just use a bit of ribbon or you could do a button and a loop. Right, so this is what we've got so far then. Now, we've got to take the paper off now. I don't take the paper off before, because it's quite handy having the fabric all rigid. So look what happens when you take off the paper, you are simply left with gorgeous fabric. When you've taken the paper off, all you then have to do is to put your accent side, your upper side, right sides together, and your undersides right sides together because you've just got to join them together. So I'm just going to stitch there using a straight stitch and then the same on the underside. So I've got my mini JL machine and I'm doing half a centimetre seam allowance and I'm doing straight stitch which is D on here, backwards and forwards to begin and then remember to do backwards and forwards at the end to finish off. So I've joined it together and I'm just going to give it a quick press, okay? So I'm just pressing it with the seams open. So now you do the same with your under fabric, half a centimetre seam allowance, straight stitch, joining them together. Well, I'm just quickly pressing the underside, be there in a minute. Good old press, you have to do it really hard with the suede. So that's what we've got. So basically, we've just got to put them together. When you've put your fabrics right sides together, you know how I don't like to use uh, pins, so we need something to make sure that they're lined up properly. So I'm going to do some li ooh, little notches, going all around. And then that way, I know I've got 
it all lined up and then all around on the outside as well now I need to put one of my ties in okay so what I'm going to do is before I start I'm just going to slip it in here in between the two layers and then that will be where I start actually so we're using straight stitch backwards and forwards and I'm just starting where I slip that little tie in and I'm going between the notches to make sure everything's all lined up with a very small half centimetre seam allowance. Just take your time, you're just working between those notches. Okay, and then I have a little break and then I relocate the next notch, notch find where that is and then make my way whoops, to there. Now, we need to leave a gap for turning it through. Okay, so where I'm going to leave my gap is here. If you come and have a little look. So there's the centre seam and this is the outer edge and I think I'm going to leave a gap that's about that big. So I'm going to keep sewing to here and then go backwards and forwards, take it out of the machine. Look, and that's what we have. So I've sewn all the way around there and I've stopped there and I'm going to start again now here. You really do have to keep lining up those notches. I just had a little bit where the fabric was on the cross and it was, uh, the fabric was stretching a little bit. So I had to ease it back in again to make sure it was all lined up so it's fine now. So I'm now at the point where I have to put the other tie in. Now I bet if you were doing it, you think to put it that way because that's the way that it ties. But then by the time we turn it inside out, it's going to be wrong. So it needs to be inside our actual collar. So it's only that little bit that pokes out. So I've got it in there. Can you see that? And still working my way round. I'm going to put the needle in and I have to pivot it now and turn it around. But you see these ties, we've got to somehow stuff them inside the collar, but still need the collar to be flat, because otherwise you're going to stitch on them. So here we go, I'm going round the inside of the collar now, but so long as my notches are lined up, I'm happy. Careful not to sew over your ties, okay? You've got to stuff them inside and then when you turn the collar the right, right, right way round, then they'll come out. So as I'm coming round the inside of the neck on the other side, look, I've got this tie, so I've got to stuff that one in there. It's all right, it's just like stuffing it into your pocket or something. Don't worry though. So I've got it in there. I'm being really careful not to stitch over it and I'm lining up my notches. So this is no pins, but lined up notches. We're coming to the end now. I have to really push that tie out of the way. And then when I get to the end, I'm gonna go backwards and forwards. So you end up with this, which doesn't look very nice, I know, but it will. So the good side is on the inside. The first thing we need to do before we turn it though is mitre that very carefully corner there so any corners need to be mitered and then wherever we've got a curve we need to do lots of little snips and then on the outer bit we need to do lots of little snips so I'm going to attend to my snips now so the reason why we do this is because when we turn it the right way round we want it to be nice and smooth and if we didn't do these little snips the fabric would pull inside and you get all this kind of bunching up stuff so it wouldn't look very nice so just take time just go around I'm doing them about a centimeter interval and then when I've done the inside I then go around and do the oops outside but you know what be really careful that you don't actually cut the threads I've come to that gap and I'm not going to snip that gap at the moment so I keep going all the way around I hope I can turn it the right way round. Right, so I'm going to, to turn it the right way round, I'm going to grab hold of one of those long bits actually, because that might help if I can get them. Otherwise, just push it through. Right, if I give a little tug on that, that will help it a bit. And then for the rest of it, I'm just going to push it out with my thumb. And you keep doing that until you get all the corners out and all the curve nice. And then you do the same on the other side. Okay, I know it looks a bit weird. 
at the moment but it will come to life when it's pressed now this opening we press that down as well so I'm going to go and press it and then we'll look at it afterwards this is all pressed now and for the little opening, do you remember there was a little opening? Well, what I did was I got a thin, thin strip of Bondi web and glued it closed, ironed it with the Bondi web so it glued it closed. And later on, I'm gonna go in and hand sew it. Yeah, right. No, I will, really. So, should we try it on the dummy and see what it looks like? Look at that, that just looks, whoa, brilliant. Now, the thing is, when you've done the print on the collar and you've made it, you can always add like bits of lace, you can do gathered bits of lace on there. I want to try it on myself now. Right, so let's have a look. So what do you think of that? Do you like it? Do you like my arty collar? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go off and make your own arty collar, I've made it really easy. All you have to do is follow the link below to lots of different arty collars and then print them off onto this special paper, fabric paper. You get it from Crafty Computer Paper, online company. Thanks for watching, bye.